I do like to start off each show uh, with a summary of kind of what I saw happening in the stock market uh, this week. Uh, unbelievable week. Again, uh, every week seems to be, you know, topping the last one in terms of complexity and what have you. So I have some some good news and some bad news. I'll start with the bad news. <laughs> the bad news is got a lot of things going on that are really crazy. We've got this situation in Russia and Ukraine has all kinds of dynamics. You know, we've had very volatile energy and, and metal prices, for example, that have come out uh, because of that. We've got Ukraine that produces a lot of wheat and that could create global food shortages. Uh, Russia produces 33% of the palladium that's used in semiconductor manufacturing. Uh, Ukraine produces a vast majority of the neon gas that's used in semiconductor production, etc. It just keeps going and all the different things that are happening there. Uh, of course, the sanctions are coming in on Russia. It puts Russia on a, you know, a teetering balance point in terms of financially. Uh, they could default on their debt. Uh, they have um, debt payments coming due on a regular basis here uh, and, and have some trouble possibly paying those off that could have some other problems to go with that uh, and so that portion is fairly new to us really the invasion started on the 24th of february and that's ongoing uh, and you know what are the ramifications of that are, are still being you know figured out uh, but we also have another situation now in china where they are locking down large cities especially cities that are kind of contributing to the supply chain uh, and we're seeing some you know like Foxconn's plant that produces Apple products is closed down because of the they have a zero COVID policy uh, and you know we'll have to see how that plays out and then this week for the first time in three years we had the Federal Reserve raise rates um, and ultimately raising rates over the longer period of time is something that the stock market doesn't like uh, because historically uh, when the rates get high enough it becomes a competitive asset classes uh, for for the stock market and so all of these things are going on right now and but the good news uh, if you're still watching and you haven't given up because of all the negative pieces that are happening the good news is that the stock market is doing unbelievably well this week the s p 500 is up over five percent for the week uh, that's the best week we've had since november of 2020 and if you remember back to that week that was the beginning of a really explosive upward moving market I'm not sure there's enough good things going on here to make the market move that high again, uh, but it is still a really good sign. We have right now, the S&P 500 is up 0.78%. This is a live show, so the market's still open. Uh, and if it holds up, that'll be the fourth day in a row that we've had a positive market. That's a big sign. We're also seeing a lot of breadth. In other words, lots of different stocks, lots of different categories and industries are participating to the upside here. We're seeing a massive movement uh, in the stock market. The market just regained the 50-day moving average on the S&P 500. It hasn't closed there yet, so we'll see what happens, but that's still a positive from a technical standpoint. We're actually not that far from the regaining the 200-day moving average as we speak. So these are all really good things that are happening. And so you got to ask yourself, you know, with all the bad things that were happening, that we're talking about, that all the bad things that we can see, why is the stock market flying upward? Uh, and so you really have to understand, first of all, there's some basics for the market that I've been talking about forever. Number one is rates are still low. OK, and there's a lots of liquidity out there. So money is moving around. Where is it going to go? Uh, they did raise rates to a quarter point, uh, but that was from basically zero. <laughs> and so, you know, are we going to make tons of money on our bank accounts and CDs? No, not yet. Uh, are bonds going to be paying a ton? No, not yet. Eventually, um, you know, mortgage prices are going up, which makes housing a little less desirable, uh, which, again, leaves the stock market as one of the places to go in this environment so there's all this money there's low interest rates where's the money going to go and a lot of it has left the stock market here at least in the short term that's why we had this downturn so far this year uh, but there's a lot that can come back in and so that's that basic is still there the rest is just kind of looking at the market from the standpoint of a forward indicator so in other words the market's looking six to 18 months ahead it does make adjustments for current things situations that get worse or better whether that's earnings or the situation in ukraine or whatever but a majority of the price is looking forward at what's happening 
So one of the things that happened this week, I think the market really liked, was that the Federal Reserve, when they raised rates, a couple of things happened. Number one is the Chairman Powell came out in the question and answer session and said that what they're seeing in the data is a strong enough economy and a strong enough job market to handle the rate increases that they're looking at. And, you know, the Federal Reserve isn't always right on that, but there is a lot of respect for the data access that they have that the rest of us don't. Uh, and so they're saying the economy is strong, looks good, should be able to handle these rate increases. I think that's a big deal. And really right on those words, the stock market started to move upward uh, on Wednesday. Uh, the other thing that I think the market really liked about the Federal Reserve comments was the fact that they put out this thing called a dot plot. And it is a situation where the you know Federal Reserve governors kind of guess how many rate increases they might have for 2022. Uh, the previous dot plot was four, uh, four increases. And this one is seven. Well, it just happens to be that the market right now is factoring in seven increases. That's basically the bet. So the Federal Reserve finally stepped up to the same level that the market's been at. And I think that makes the market happy in a certain degree because the feeling has been the Federal Reserve is behind on fighting inflation. And so getting just a little bit more aggressive uh, might help inflation get more under control. And inflation has that capability of kind of knocking down earnings uh, if companies can't raise prices during that period of time. So, um, you know, those are good things. I think, you know, also looking forward six to 18 months, are we still going to have China closed down? Uh, you know, probably not. Are we still going to have as many supply chain constraints as we have now uh, over the next six to 18 months, or will those get better? My opinion is those are going to get better. I'll give you an example. I just had a conversation this morning with a friend who's an advisor who's telling me that one of his clients is in a big company that's doing all this research on you know, supply chain issues and what's going on and, and, and how they can improve that uh, for themselves and for their customers. And uh, one of the things they found was kind of interesting that the, that the ports in China are loading boats essentially 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The ports here in the U.S. are only unloading boats 118 hours a week. Well, there's 160 hour, eight hours a week. So there's 50 hours a week more loading of boats in China than there are unloading of boats here in the U.S. Uh, that's something we probably need to fix. And that's why we have so many boats sitting out in the, you know, the harbors of some of these big uh, ports and such, too. So, uh, you know, there's commissions now. The White House has brought in uh, money's being thrown at the supply chain issue. Um, and, you you know, will that work or not? You know, how do the politicians factor into this? Can they make this work? I'm not sure, but I will say one thing I feel really strongly about. There's money on the table. When there's money on the table and people know, hey, if we can unload more boats and we can get more trucks and trains to move those cargoes, uh, you know, pieces off of the port property, there's more money to be made and everybody makes more money. The trucking companies make more money. You know, the container companies make more. It's just, it's incredible they can get that going and so that's capitalism to me is that ability to figure out how to get past some of these things and how to get these things to work better and that's been one of my key premises about the supply chain issue all along so uh, i think you know at this point you had a situation this week where things got so negative and everything was there and everybody that was negative about the market probably sold um and what that left was buyers <laughs> and so the buyers came in and man did they run this price up uh, and you've got international buyers now right i mean if you look at the what's happening here with russia ukraine the u.s has less exposure to that situation than say europe does for example and some of these other places so we're starting i think to see as a recipient of some of the cash flow that might come into our market uh, just because you know we have less uh, of a, a risk in that particular arena um, so really fascinating. In the end, I think what will be driving this, if it keeps going up, will just be the fear of missing out. Tons of people sold, lots of money on the sidelines, uh, new money that's coming in that wasn't purchased into the stock market that might be now. Uh, fear of missing out will really drive the market upward. Uh, and you could end up with a situation where the market comes up very, very rapidly. I would be surprised if that happens. Uh, my premise has been that, you know, we'll be dipping and going sideways and volatility for the first half of the year. Maybe we make zero on the stock market for the first half. 
uh, and maybe 10% in the second half. I still see the basics here in play. The, when the Federal Reserve, on average, over the last 70 years, has raised interest rates, a, a recession starts on average three years later, on average. That was a big range, but that means theoretically that the average recession would start in March of 2025. That fits much more within the process of what I think about. It is after multiple rate increases. It's after we go from a quarter point to four, five, six, seven percent uh, rates that we start to see big competitive pressure to the stock market. We start to see slowing down of the economy, and then you get a stock market downturn with a recession. And those are the things you have to watch out for. Um, I think the economy is too hot right now to have a one quarter point or even these seven increases they're talking about causing a downturn. Um, and so that that's that's the outlook. That's what we're looking at. And I, I really don't see much change in that. Uh, I'm really really glad that. We rebalanced on the 24th of January and the 24th of February. Those turned out to be really good points, uh, two points where the rubber band had really stretched down. Uh, and so that's uh, that's the strategy. This is still buying opportunity market, uh, you know, until until not until otherwise notified. So anyway, that's what's going on this week. Really look forward to seeing what's going to happen next week. Fantastic time frame to be an investor. Look forward to talking to you about that then. Thank you.